Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at doors. Doors are fairly straightforward. They are the tab underneath tokens called Place Door. So all I do is left click on the door and you'll see that I have a variety of doors. I've got Cyberpunk, I've got Fantasy, I've got General and I've got Guest Artists, I've got Doors, Windows, Modern Sci-Fi. All of these are at our control, at our disposal to choose from. I'm going to be creating this uh, dungeon, if you will, so I'm going to go with Fantasy Doors. Uh, left click on that option opens up the uh, various values for us. We've got dragon gates, skeletal doors, wooden doors, archways, all kinds of wonderful things. All I do is simply select the door. So let's go with uh, skeletal doors open leading into this big arena. And uh, I then all I do is move my cursor over the wall segment of the room that I want to add a door to. Now notice that these two rooms are adjacent to each other. So when I select this uh, door and I move my cursor over, you see it slightly ghosts over the segment. And then all I do is left click. Automatically, it starts to indent the door into the walls, erasing the walls slightly to make it look as if that door is there. I can then select normal skeleton doors, for example, and do the same thing there. And let's say there. So you're walking through these corridors, getting to this final chamber. And then I want, uh, let's say, a skeletal door up here just off my map. Now, what it is doing, and I will hopefully be able to show you this here. This is a prison door. So if I'm going to drop these in, this is going to be quite dramatic. You're going to see what, what we can do here in a moment. Now, these doors are all identical, and it starts to look a little bit unfinished or perhaps lazy if we just have all of these doors open like that. So I'm going to go back to my select tool. I'm going to select the room and then I'm going to select the wall segment or the door in it. So I'm going to click on the door and that allows me to select the door. Now I have some other options. I can scroll down. Firstly, I can change the door. If I just click on a different door type, it will automatically change that door. I don't want to change that door. I want to show you something else. And that's the mirror H mirror horizontal, mirror vertical, snap to grid. So if I select the mirror H, what that does is that flips the door to the inside. And automatically now, my doors no longer seem as if they're just carbon copies of one another, because we certainly don't want that to happen. Perhaps I want to snap the door to the grid so that it's sitting exactly on the grid space. Again, I come down here and I have my option of snapped grid. And so when I'm placing it, it's going to snap that door directly to the grid, making sure that each of these are, as I left click, select and drag, making sure that each of these will then fit. Notice now it's sitting halfway between the two grids. We don't want that. So we come down, we say snap to grid. Now, again, these options are available to us. So let's just change these doors. So they look a little bit more interesting, more like prison doors, perhaps selecting each one of them, going in and changing to our iron doors as we so choose or iron bars. I think that makes it more interesting. And uh, we'll just do two doors like that and two doors like that. Now let's create some more doors. So I am going to go here and I'm going to select the, uh, let's say, big archway. And I wanted to go into this room here, but I wanted to snap to grid before I even place it. So I'm going to scroll down here and I still have all of my options. The mirror horizontal, mirror vertical, snap to grid if I so desire. Let's turn that one on and we're going to place that here. But what I also want to do here is say that it needs a key. So I'm going to place this door down and you're going to see that red dot. That is the code within Dungeon Fog to indicate that this door needs a key. Now for the next set of doors, I think that can just be a regular doorway of some kind. Let's go with the dungeon door. It does need a key, but I'm going to say that it's secret. It's hidden. So let's put that in here and it's still snapping to grid. So that's a hidden door. Again, we get that red outline. Now the players won't see these, by the way. If you are using the Dungeon Fog viewer, the players will see a regular door and they will not see the door here. They will actually see the wall uh, because it is concealed. Once they, of course, discover that, you can then change that. And of course, we then have our last function, which is, and I'm just going to go with, let's say, some big skeletal doors here, nice big open ones. I'm going to make them not concealed, but I am going to say that they're trapped. So I'm going to then go here and let's drop them in there. And you'll notice they've gone red to indicate that they are trapped. So those are the three different indicators that uh, Dungeon Fog uses for locked, concealed, or trapped. 
Finally, if I want to add in windows, I have a few options for windows. I've got double windows, which could be quite nice. Let some sunlight into the space. Uh, notice that they are still trapped windows. So yes, I think that's quite a nice trap. It's like trying to escape the arena, break through the windows, except they're trapped. Uh, that's quite fun. To make sure the next windows that I place are not trapped, I deselect the trapped option. And uh, you notice here there's also a cutout in wall. Now, let me place a single window. Let's say, uh, let's turn the snap to grid off. I'm going to place a single window here. Notice it does indent the wall. If I were to say deselect cut out in wall, I would then say place a window here and notice now the window no longer interrupts the wall segment. So again, this is an aesthetic choice or perhaps if you wanted to indicate that this is glass windows inset into a wall but not actually disrupting the wall, you could choose that as well. Another thing to note is that the shadow changes. If you're cutting out the wall, the shadow is broken as a window might do, but if you do not use the cutout in wall, the shadow remains consistent. And again, you can change all of those options by selecting the select tool, going to the individual room, and then selecting that and scrolling down and then changing it as you so need to. And that is how you place doors and windows in Dungeon Fog.